blame it on him. Right. And after spending so much time with the men this past weekend and throughout the week uh, on their rent men's retreat, I've been thinking a lot more about the devil. Correlation is not causation. I'm just, I leave it up to your interpretation of what it might be. But we have been speaking a lot about the discernment of spirits. That was been the subject last week, and it's going to be the subject that we talk to the women about. How do we discern who is speaking to us in our minds when it's not ourselves? So it's Catholic teaching that we never have a thought on our own. It's always our thoughts influenced or being tempted by the good spirits or the evil spirits at all times. So discerning spirits is the question of who is it that is speaking to me? What are my thoughts and are they leading me closer to God or away from him? so that I can reject the bad and go towards the good. So we've spoken a lot about discerning God's voice, and I'll touch on that, but I do want to focus more on understanding the voice of the enemy. So I'm going to speak about three things today, the nature of life, the nature of the diabolical, and the nature of discernment in general. So the fundamental rule of discernment is the understanding that we're all in a battle. That life on earth for man is a continual battle. And it's a battle over who we choose to follow in our life. The good or the evil. And that's what the first reading was speaking about. The the word choice comes up three times. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. God has set before us fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. And that's what it comes down to. Who do we choose to follow in life? And I'm going to take a lot from Father John Hardin. He's a great Jesuit priest. um, And he spent his whole life teaching uh, uh, what St. Ignatius himself taught about the discernment of spirits. He was the father of this. And one of the key meditations he talks about is the two standards. He said... The two standards correspond to the two leaders in the world who are always trying to draw people to follow them. One leader is Jesus Christ, who inspires believing Christians to dedicate themselves to the extension of his kingdom in this world. The other is Satan, who is trying to seduce people to follow him for the extension of his demonic kingdom. Who is trying to seduce people to follow, which in the words of St. Augustine they call the city of man which is in constant conflict with the city of God. So we've spoken about that before. City of man, city of God. The city of man is composed of those who so go after their own desires that they're willing to deny the commandments of God in order to build their utopia on earth. And the city of God is composed of those who are willing to sacrifice their own desires when they conflict with God's will, their desire to get to heaven. City of man, city of heaven. So there's one world, one war, and only two sides. Christ and those who are opposed to Christ's teachings. And every single one of us right now on this earth is in the midst of that battle continually. And so like that brings up an important understanding that life is a test. That's why every single one of us will undergo a judgment. Me especially. Priests, bishops, popes. They're judged the most heavily to those who are given more. More is expected. But we will all be judged on how we used our freedom and what we chose in this life. Okay, so now the nature of the diabolical. So who who is the devil that we understand through scripture and through tradition? Well, we believe that he was the highest of all the angels, meaning that he was the highest of all God's creation. How does the highest angel end up becoming a demon? Well, it's because Satan itself, his word, his name means non serbion, I will not serve. And so there's a rejection of, of Satan to follow God. And then we don't know if it was because God planned to become man and he wanted to reject the idea of the incarnation, uh, being born of a human being. Um, we don't know exactly what it is, but even the angels had to go through a test. No angel was in heaven right when they were uh, created. So all creatures have to go to this test. And it said that Satan was able to seduce one-third of the angels to follow him in rebellion against God. And the primary way, reason that the 
that the devil, um, that Satan rebelled against God was out of envy. The devil is defined by envy. He envied, he hated God because he envied God and he wanted himself to be God and that's why he rebelled against God and said, I will not serve you. I will only serve myself. And so when the devil was cast out, his war against God is brought to human beings. And that's why in Genesis, the first time we see um, the, de- the demon coming onto the scene, it was to tempt Adam and Eve to rebel against God, that you can't trust him and that you should take the fruit from the tree of good and evil and eat it for yourself, meaning that you should choose for yourself what is right and what is wrong. That's what it means to try to become God. I decide my own life. However that goes, whatever that means, I decide for myself what I do. So that's the fundamental temptation that demon gives, but it's out of envy. He envied Adam and Eve as he envies every single one of us because we still have the promise of heaven. So his war against God is trying to steal souls away from God by inspiring them to do the same rebellion that he himself engaged in uh, in his time. And he is very, very successful. There's nothing more tempting for all of us than to please our own will. That doesn't stop once you become a priest. Right? You don't get a free pass to heaven. You constantly have to fight against the temptation to do my own will rather than following Christ. So Jesus called the devil in the New Testament a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Because the devil is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. What does that mean? He lies in order to kill. And how many of us have had the experience where it's like a temptation? When I get that temptation to do something and I think like, I will be happy, I will be fulfilled when I do this thing, even though in my heart, it's telling me something's wrong here. I shouldn't do it. But the flesh is weak and I choose to eat that brownie or I choose to look at dinner or whatever it might be at that time. How do we feel afterwards? Yeah, an empty, right? It's an emptiness, a guilt, a sorrow that comes. No one can escape the sorrow that comes from the lie of sin. So the devil mur- lies in order, in order to murder. And this is what uh, Father John Harden has to say about that. He says, the devil is a murderer in the deepest sense. His ambition is to murder human souls. Remember, there's a first death, the death of the human body. There's also a second death the death of the soul. The devil's ambition is to murder human souls by destroying God's grace in their spiritual lives. Being in hell himself, the devil wants nothing more than to bring human beings to join him in his own eternal damnation. And quote Father John Harding. So the devil lied to Adam and Eve to get them to rebel against God so that they themselves would be cast out of the garden. And it's the same temptations that we're all in in our own life to follow God's commandments or to seek to satisfy my own desires and rebel. And the best place to look to understand the devil's characteristics, Hollywood, we all know that now. And so, for example, um, some of you may be surprised at what had happened at the Grammys last week. Most of you just look surprised that the Grammys are still actually a thing in this world, but not only are they still going, but Madonna is still alive. So two really big surprises there. And uh, so Madonna was introducing this thing. I just want to focus on one, one aspect because I thought this was so fascinating. Um, Madonna introduced a song by Sam Smith and transgender man named Kim Petras who sang a song called Unholy. And the song was glorifying adultery and fornication. But the way that they sang it was like they were surrounded by fire and red and dressed extremely and modestly, and uh, just praising s- sin. Right? And um, Madonna introduced it this way, and I thought this was fascinating. She said, I want to begin by praising all the little rebels in the world who aren't afraid to do their own thing. That is a perfect sign of the demonic temptation, to do your own thing. And then Kim Petros, after he won the award, the Grammy, he gave an interview afterwards, and he said, to us, this song that we sang 
represented our rejection of religion. Very straight up. said, growing up, I wanted religion, but religion didn't want me. And then encouraged, like, religion didn't want me for who I am and what I stand for. Therefore, I reject God and I reject religion. Devil said the same thing. That is the deepest demonic lie. That in order for God to accept us, he has to come to us on our terms rather than us conforming to him. That's the conditions of the relationship. And what we have to under... And then she went on, went on to say all these things about like, if you, you want to be happy, follow your interior light, do your own thing, and, and discover your deepest self. And all those cliche slogans that have been around since the Garden of Eden. But the, the central temptation here, what's, what was found full manifestation, was the demonic creed that I really want us to understand here on a big level so we can see how it happens in every one of our hearts. None of us is that far different from them in our own battles, in our own hearts with sin, right? That's why we don't judge anyone, but we want to illuminate what that struggle is. None of them said, you should worship Satan. That never came out, even though it was all in full blast on like that image of Satanism. All but their essential creed was, do you follow yourself? Follow your own desires. And that is the satanic lie. The, the, there's actually a satanic Bible, and the creed in it, like the central creed of Satanism, is do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's it. To do your own thing is the whole of the law. Okay, so life is a test who we choose to follow, Devil tempts us out of envy and rebellion against God to join him in that rebellion and thus be separated from God for eternity. Now, how is that nature of discernment of spirits lived out in all of us? Now, the basic rule of discernment is that this is fundamental. The good and evil spirits work on us according to our state of soul. It's according to where we stand in life of how we hear the demon speaking to us or God speaking to us. So this is Father John Harden again. The single most important thing to know about demonic strategy is how differently the devil tempts good and bad people. Good people would be those who are sincerely trying to do God's will. They are weak, they fail, they make mistakes, and they do at times offend God. But their underlying philosophy is to be faithful to Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be a good person. To fall into sin at times, to have our weaknesses, to have to go to confession, never makes us a bad person. In fact, the most holy thing we could ever do in our life is go to confession. And the more we go, the more grace that we get. But it's really important to understand that when you are striving to please Jesus Christ in your life, when your underlying philosophy is to follow Jesus Christ... God will speak to you in peace. God will speak to you in encouragement and love. And he'll lift you up. The demonic spirit will accuse you and try to drag you down and make you feel terrible about yourself and move you towards despair like it's too hard. It's really important to understand that because a lot of you, if you're here right now, it means you're you're probably seeking Jesus Christ. And we're all in different, you know, Um, kind of distances in that journey, but the main thing we have to ask ourselves, is your underlying philosophy to be faithful to Christ? To want to follow him? And if that's true, you have to be aware of accusation and condemnation and, and temptations to sorrow and despair. That's not coming from God. That's coming from the evil spirit. Now the flip side, Father Hardin. Bad people, on the other hand, are those who are, who are living in sin. They may profess to be Christian believers, or they may be in positions of great importance and influence, even in the church and society. They can be priests, they can be religious, they can be bishops, and they can be presidents. But their philosophy is basically to follow their own inclinations, no matter how sinful these may be. It doesn't matter if I say I'm a Christian, or if I say I'm nothing, whatever. What's important is, in, is my philosophy to follow my own inclinations. 
my own desires, my, my own feelings. God speaks to such souls in accusation, right, in condemnation, to wake them up. And the demons speak to them as God spoke to good people in consolation and peace. And like, don't worry, don't change. Because why? It doesn't want them to change, right? For example, pretty just weird example. Um, imagine you have a guy in his 20s, right? He's uh, overweight, lazy, nothing good for him going on in life and no ambition. Let's just call him Isaiah. Okay, so Isaiah is there, his random name. Um, he meets a really cool, smart, tall, handsome, ridiculous in shape guy who goes to the gym all the time named Dathan. And so Dathan <laughs> invites him to go to the gym, right? But Isaiah, he doesn't want to go to the gym because he wants to keep living his very lazy life. What does Dathan's uh, voice sound like to him? Accusatory, right? Putting him down all the time. It's uncomfortable, right? But then he also has a friend spends a lot of time with him, who's as equally as lazy and do nothing good in his life, kind of a normal gloomer and everything, and just talks a lot, doesn't know how to ride a scooter. His name is Nika. So <laughs> Nika doesn't want him to change either, right? So Nika tells him, it's okay. Don't go to the gym. We can hang out on the couch. We can just do our own thing. Like, we're fine just as we are. How is, how is Isaiah going to interpret Nika's voice? Very consoling, right? Because he doesn't want to change. And Nika's envious of Dathan. And he, doesn't want, he knows he can't be like him. And he doesn't want anyone else to be like him. All right? But say at one point, I don't know if you guys are laughing, right? These are random names, right? So, all right. So at one point, Isaiah gets a light. I need to convert. I need to change myself. So all of a sudden, Dathan's voice of come to the gym, eat right, get your life together, start going to church. Sounds actually really good and encouraging. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But Nike is jealous. Nike is envious. And Nike wants to break him down because Nike doesn't want to change. And so now Nike is telling him, hey, you can never do it. You're never going to change. That's too much. You can never look like Dathan, which is kind of true, but you can try, <laughs> you can try for it. All right. So in that, now, Isaiah, he's going to experience Nika's voice as condemning and Dathan's voice as uplifting and encouraging. See how it changes according to your state in life, where you're going? So in this example, Isaiah is the soul that is discerning the voices, Dathan is God, and Nika's the devil. All right? Makes sense. All right, now you guys finally are all on. All right. So in summary, when we're moving towards heaven, when, we're, when our hearts are set on heaven, God's voice is consoling and loving and gentle and encouraging. That's what you have to look to. But when we are moving and the, and the devil's voice is condemning and pushes us into sorrow, when you're moving towards sin and farther away from heaven, God's voice will be condemning. It will be a no. It will be a shock. And the demon's voice will be consolation. You're good just as you are. You don't need to change. You don't need to do anything different. It all depends on where we are oriented in our life. They change as we change. Their voices change as we change. So how do we win? Last point. We win by obeying Jesus Christ. Just as what the, all the readings came down to, blessed are those who follow the commandments of God. We follow the commandments that Jesus Christ taught us from Scripture and that have been unchanged for the last 2,000 years in the church. We don't divorce. We don't contracept. We don't fornicate. We forgive those who hurt us. We don't envy one another. We go to Mass on Sundays. And whenever we fall, which we all fall, we go to confession and we ask forgiveness. And then we get up and we keep going again. In a word, our underlying philosophy in our life is to remain faithful to Jesus Christ. St. Paul says, rather we speak of God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory. What is God's wisdom? And what is God's glory? The cross. 
The cross of Jesus Christ is God's deepest wisdom. And it's by the cross that we overcome all the assaults of the evil spirit. And St. Paul goes from there to say, the, keeping our hearts set on heaven where no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it even entered in the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. That's the way that we beat the evil spirit. We keep our heart set on heaven. We strive to get to heaven. We long to be faithful to Jesus Christ and to suffer whatever consequences that come with that. And when we do that, we we see the cross, which the cross is my horizontal desires when they intersect with God's vertical desires for me. And I deny myself, take up my cross, and join him. We must long for heaven and be willing to sacrifice everything to get there. But in this life, nothing is certain. We are all in a battle, and that battle is over one thing, who we choose to follow. If you choose, you can keep God's commandments. They will save you. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him.